good evening everyone welcome you all to the fourth webinar of mehta and mehta on csr series uh, as you all know mehta and mehta started this initiative to discuss on important aspects of csr uh, we have already covered uh, csr evolution uh, section 135 then uh, expenditure and penalties under csr uh, today we will be speaking on the implementing agency as we all are aware a uh, implementing agency a company can uh, implement its csr activities through a implementing agency making it a very important aspect of csr however there are many queries in the minds of professionals uh, with such agencies to clear our doubts and gain some more clarity today we have with us ms subhashree sarkar um, she is a csr professional with more than 17 years of experience in csr having worked with uh, corporates government agencies un agencies and ngos currently she is heading social responsibility division of bisleri international private limited before this she was heading uh, csr of everest industries limited and luminous power technologies limited uh, we welcome you madam and thank you for giving time to our webinar today Uh, our second panelist for today is Mr. Rakesh Kumar. Uh, Mr. Rakesh Kumar is the Senior Vice President, Company Secretary of Star Union IHC Life Insurance Company Limited. He is also a Managing Trustee of Sud Life Foundation. Uh, he has more than a decade of experience of heading CSR activities in his current organization. Uh, we welcome you, sir. We also have our very own uh, Sudhakar sir. Uh, he is a Chief Consultant at Mehta and Mehta. Uh, who will be uh, heading this uh, CSR series? Uh, welcome, sir. Uh, welcome, Vipti, madam, and uh, she is also part of this webinar today. And uh, Dolly uh, Thakkar, who looks after the CSR uh, practice in Mehta and Mehta, will be giving the presentation today. Uh, just a, a discussion before we start this. Usually, we answer questions during the session. today we will complete the entire presentation and post that we will be taking up questions and uh, we i will jot down 5 10 important questions and we'll discuss it post the session today uh, okay over to you dolly so uh, good evening everyone welcome on behalf of mehta and mehta and thank you for the uh, the response we have received in our last webinar for the csr expenditure so uh, today we are going to start with the uh, implementing agency the Com uh, companies act has introduced in the amendment a uh, topic about the implementing agency uh, today in this ppt we are going to cover the topic why there was a requirement of the implementing agency then rule 4 of the company csr policy rules 2014 how to identify the implementing agency and some of the faqs we have taken from the mc faqs and the guidelines uh, by the icsr as you all know that uh, csr got it uh, got its recognition in the section 135 of companies act and also thereafter there was a, a csr policy rules issued by mca in 2014 and also schedule 7 which is describing the csr activities so uh, let's first understand why there was a requirement of the implementing agency so uh, in 2018 high level committee has found that there is a delay in the uh, you know project identification multi year project and the csr spend which was again the leading to the underspending of the csr funds by the corporate so high level committee highlighted in their report that there is a requirement of the implementing agency and also the corporates are supposed to do the due diligence before appointing the implementing agency so therefore uh, it is also like essential for the companies to identify some non government organizations who are operating in the local area who is already aware about the on ground problem and also which can assist the uh, corporates in the formulation of the project also in on, on the implementation uh, implementation part of the same because as you know csr is not just a one time charity or one time spending on the social activities okay so it is a uh, it is an activity with a long term objective of the company so mere distribution of the funds that not that is not going to create the social impact 
also further where csr is undertaken through the implementing agency the bo uh, board of the company would be able to monitor the utilization properly and also the board can focus on the uh, you know focus more on the strategizing deciding and the spending so once they are giving this uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, uh, giving this to the implementing agency to plan and plan about the project and also to look after the utilization of it the board will be relieved from the uh, that duty of the csr spend here i would like to uh, ask the panelist to uh, give some input on this Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dolly. First of all, thanks, Ms. Dolly and uh, Sudhakar sir for having me in this webinar. Uh, I think uh, this is a really very important point, the need of the impl implementing agencies. Based on my experience of uh, this years in the development sector and when we, um, in the CSR front also, when we look at implementing projects, this is a very crucial part. We can prepare our strategies sitting at uh, in our office, but when it comes to the implement operation, this is all about the how good is the team, how they are able to uh, implement the way it has been planned. So here I see ensure really have a very important role to play. What you have mentioned in this one or two, uh, this uh, two slides, these are very important. Other than this, also, in my opinion, what I have experienced, NGO has a local presence. So when, as a corporate, we go to implement any project in particular, any location, say, for we have our manufacturing unit in one or two places, and then suddenly I go and start talking to the people, I will not get a proper response and acceptance. So there comes the experience of the NGOs. They know they understand the geography they understand all the um pause and cons how we should touch point which are the, um, the stakeholders we should start so this way ensure gives us a vast experience so i feel that is one very important part and the second thing which also i feel ensure is not only uh like implementing agencies this is also a um the entire um, organization who has a complete setup for implementing for communication for advocacy so we should utilize all these things because in a corporate we have experience in the business but may not be that first experience in the social development sector so when we have already a sector established why not let us uh, utilize that capacity so in my opinion this is a very good combination working through implementing agencies yes uh, Raki, sir, would you like to add on yeah, anything? Um, um, I would like to add that uh, as uh, ma'am is saying that we are expertise in the business vertical, uh, visual, uh, business uh, business uh, model and the things we are able to do that. But in uh, CSR, what I personally feel or the experience which I have, that it is better to take CSR also as a separate vertical, business vertical. Because if we are putting uh, in one and one rupees, we have to think about the return what we are getting. Uh, similarly, in CSR, if we are investing, the output should be very clear. And output should be very clear because, uh, but we industry as such in like, um, I'm not talking about the, all the companies which are doing CSR for 100 years and so, but the new companies which are entering into the CSR activities and which are mandated to do the CSR things, uh, they need uh, um, implementing agency who are expertise and knowing the touch points, et cetera, what the madam is talking about. And the good part is that the Companies Act has a very clear cut uh, definition, which kind of the implementing agency should be, what should be the criteria of selection, and what should be the um, uh, requirement the implementing agencies have to do. So all we will discuss, I hope, in the further slides. But uh, this is really a very good, uh, this is the requirement to have implementing agency uh, for institution of the CSR activity. Thank you. Only just to add further whatever uh, Rakesh and uh, Subhashri has mentioned. See, appointing and implementing agency, the clients what as uh, their roles are permitted, a company can take up CSR activity on its own or through an implementing agency. It's virtually we are outsourcing the activity. Whenever we outsource, on what basis we outsource? 
depending upon the economics. Is it economical for me if I am handling on my own or is it economical for me when I am outsourcing it? If the difference or disparity is not very much and if I have the bandwidth, I may be taking up on my own. But for big conglomerates, definitely outsourcing is not advisable. And number they do it also because they do it on their own. However, they might be creating a separate agency for that. Say, for example, in case of Reliance Industries, we have created a separate uh, uh, company, a Section 8 company in the name of Reliance Foundation. And that Reliance Foundation is have, have developed the ability over a period of time and started handling it separately, completely. As Rakesh has rightly mentioned that you may create a business vertical, not necessarily that vertical is to be under the same company, but it may be under the same group. That vertical can be by way of a Section 8 company or by way of a trust or whatever it may be. But it all depends upon the economics. And if it is a very, your spend is very less, it is always advisable to outsource it to through an implementing agency. But that point of time, definitely the monitoring responsibility is your own. Okay. But if it is not, if it is a big size district, definitely it is advisable for you to do it on your own. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah, so uh, in the act or the rules, uh, uh, definition of implementing agency is not given. So, uh, so basically, the implementing agency uh, will be a agent of the company. So there will be an agent and the partner uh, relationship between the implementing agency and the corporates. So uh, CSR Act is have the company as the principal and the end beneficiaries as the is the destination where the mode of implementation is not direct. CSR is said to be undertaken through implementing agency. Uh, rule four provides of carrying of CSR activities either by the company itself or through the uh, any specified implementing agency. So under the rule four, sub -rule, as per the sub rule one, the board shall ensure that the CSR activities are undertaken by the company itself or through a company established under section eight of the act or a registered public trust or a registered society, which are exempted under sub clause four, five, six or six A of clause 23C of the section 10 or registered under 12A and also approved under ATG of the income tax act on 1961 established by company either singly along with or along with the other uh, other company so basically here the section 8 companies or the registered society or a registered public trust uh, which is exempted again under section uh, sorry sub clause 4 5 6 or 6a so basically the section 8 uh, trust or the society which is exempted uh, under this section 10 so they are into charitable purpose they are established for the any society or related activities. Also, they are into any philanthropic activities, which is given under the Section 10 of the IT Act. Also, they have the registration under Section 12A and ATG of the IT Act. They can undertake that uh, implementing, uh, they can become the implementing agency for the corporate. A company established under Section 8 or the uh, registered uh, trust or a registered society, which is established by the central government or the state government. So here, the, uh, the Section 8 trust or the society, which is established by central government or state government, they don't require the registration under Section uh, under ATG and 12A. Uh, moving onwards, uh, there is a... Uh, Subclause C, which is talking about any entity established under an act of parliament or a state legislature or a company, which is again uh, established under section eight of the act or a registered public trust or a registered society, which is again exempted under subclause uh, six, five, uh, six, sorry, four, five, six, and six A of the section 10 and registered under the section 12 A and ATG having an established track record of at least three years in undertaking the similar activities. So basically under sub rule one of rule four, uh, in the act it is given that uh, which companies or uh, which NGOs 
uh, can be uh, can become the implementing agency and what are the criteria what are the uh, compliances they need to follow like they should be submitting atg form they should be complied with her 12a submissions yeah so here in a nutshell uh, there are uh, like modes of implementation if we talk about a uh, company has a three way to uh, do the uh, you know spending of the csr fund either they can do the self uh, self implementation so they will be directly spending to the ngo or they will be doing it jointly with any other company or they will be selecting any implementing agency uh, through implementing agency they can do by the established by the company again uh, just now sir has mentioned about the reliance foundation so uh, same way company can establish their own foundation or they can uh, do do it uh, through the government uh, again section 8 public trust or the society which is made by the government or by the public agency or a company can spend through the statutory body only thing i would like to draw the attention of the participants is whenever you are creating a trust for the purpose as an implementing agency that means you are doing it directly on your own and you are creating a trust for that particular purpose please ensure that it is a public trust it is, should not be a private trust if it is a private trust it is not qualified for to become an implementing agency so whenever you are registering a separate trust it should be a public trust only yes So again, uh, as per sub rule two of sub uh, rule four, entity is supposed to who are uh, uh, who is going to take up the CSR activity as an implementing agency, they are supposed to file the form CSR one ele electronically with the registrar uh, with effect from first April two thousand twenty one. So the projects or the programs ongoing CSR projects or the programs which is uh, ongoing before the first April two thousand twenty one. They are not required to uh, go for the registration for the same program. If they are taking up any new project or new program after 1st April 2021, they are supposed to do the registration in the form of CSR1. Further, uh, C form CSR1 should be signed and shall be verified by the chartered accountant or a cost accountant or a company secretary who are into practice. And also when the uh, when the corporate or the implementing agency is going to file the form CSR1, a unique CSR registration number shall be generated and that will be their uh, uh, certificate of registration that they have complied with the form CSR1. So here also only one thing I would like to add is that, you see the seriousness of the implementing agency. Earlier what happened was there was uh, nobody, I mean the ministry was not tracking that. Whereas now with the CSR1 registration, the ministry is tracking the implementing agencies also. So definitely whatever the report we are doing in CSR2, that is the annual return, they will definitely be linked to the, the implementing agencies figures wherever they want to, they want to do that. So cross-checking is going to be there. So one should be very careful whatever the figures we are reporting, number one. Number two, that a unique CSR registration number is being given. The purpose of giving such number by the ministry is only just to track these implementing agencies. The third thing is the CSR one form is to be digitally verified by the chartered accountant or cost accountant or company secretary in practice. So the authenticity and the veracity of the implementing agency is also being voted for by the qualified professionals. So this reveals the seriousness of the ministry as far as the tracking of the implementing agencies is also concerned. Yes. So as we discussed earlier about the modes of CSR implementation, uh, in sub rule three, it's given that a company may engage in uh, with the international organization for the purpose of designing, monitoring and evaluation of the CSR project or the programs as per again in line, it should be in line with their CSR policy, as well as for the capacity building of their own personal uh, for CSR. So here a company cannot uh, appoint international organization as an implementing agency, but they can definitely uh, 
uh, engage with them for the purpose of designing, monitoring, or evaluation of their CSR project. Um, further, uh, in sub rule four, a company may also collaborate with the other companies for undertaking project or the programs in such a manner that the CSR committee of respective companies are in a position to report separately of such project. So let's say there is a listed company and they have a multiple group companies. So they can uh, uh, conduct the CSR, uh, they can span, uh, you know, they can uh, collaborate with each other and uh, do the CSR spanning. But again, in their annual reports, they have to uh, specify separately about the their CSR committee and their CSR project. Dolly, just one point to add over here. Is it some provision uh, that uh, rule four of sub rule four of four that if a company may collaborate with the other companies? So if suppose one company uh, have no experience in CSR, just entered and uh, obliged to do the CSR activities, how they will do? It? So they need some experienced hand which can take them through of the CSR things. So it is a good provision uh, that the, those companies which uh, which are experienced and uh, wide uh, uh, provision of doing the CSR thing, et cetera, they can collaborate with them and do the CSR activities. And then that will be easy for them to, uh, to do the CSR uh, activities as, as per the provision of the Companies Act, because rule and regulation and the provision is very strict in day by day, it is getting a stricter. So it is very good provision and the new companies can definitely opt for uh, either through the new co other company or the group company, they can tie up and they can do the CSR activities. So this is very good provision, which uh, uh, I, I would like to add. Yeah, to add on one more thing, like uh, when we talk about currently, like uh, the scalability of the program, this can also give uh, more scale to the program. When uh, if say for income, uh, Company A, they have a limited budget. So there would be the even the work activities would be restricted to one or two areas. But when we collaborate with other partners, so we can be a, uh, give a good scale to the projects. So that is another aspect. Yes, See, one, yes, more thing, uh, one more thing I would like to add, whatever Sumeshri and uh, Rakesh has mentioned, that whenever you are collaborating, say, for example, in again, I will take the example of Reliance Industries where I worked earlier. That in Reliance, you know, whichever the companies, we have approximately 300 plus companies were there which were to spend CSR money. Now, all these companies, they were spending the money through Reliance Foundation only. And Reliance Foundation into not only one activity, it is into different activities which are permitted under CSRs, that's sorry, Schedule 7. So, whichever the companies are in whichever the activities they want to engage. So, while they are assigning that particular job to Reliance Foundation. They have to clearly mention that this is the amount which we will be contributing it. This is the amount which we are obligated to spend. And these are the activities on which we want to spend. Say, for example, a company want to spend 50% for health and 50% for education. And it is obligated to spend, say, about 10 crore rupees. So while that it is engaging Reliance Foundation for this particular purpose, it has to say that I will be uh, what's called as I'm not giving you 10 crore rupees out of which five crores I would like to spend for health and five crores I would like to spend for educational activities. And that quarterly monitoring or half yearly monitoring, whatever the company wants to do it, it has to have it. Periodical reports it has to take from the implementing agency. At the end of the year, the implementing agency has to give a clear report that as per the assignment, this is the amount what we have spent, these are the activities on which we have spent it. And of course, we have a, uh, a, a practice in Reliance that whenever the implementing agency is giving a report, it has to also give an audit report also that the amounts is spent for the assigned purpose and completely the amount has been spent. That is for the internal controls point of view. We used to have the third party audit also. That, that depends upon the companies and you know, how they want to do it. It is not mandatory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So uh, there is one query which comes up uh, uh, like very frequently. So whether the dispersal to implementing agency constitute a spending? So the answer is uh, no. Agency acts on the behalf of the company, not independently. 
so basically here corporate is giving the funds to the uh, implementing agency for the purpose of csr spending so there is a relationship of partner and agent therefore such dispersal of funds cannot be treated as a spending it is like a mere parking of the funds to the agency of the company mere dispersal of the funds for implementation of a project does not amount to spending unless the implementing agency utilizes that the whole amount for the csr purpose yeah just uh, go back to, uh, go back go back uh, yeah dolly rakesh you would like to add something here in this but this is a very important slide actually according to me as far as the spending of the csr is concerned after you are this thing, I would like to add for that. Rakesh and Subhashri, you you have please add it further. Yeah, absolutely. This is a very good um, query and the FAQ you can say because generally it happens the people or uh, the company understands if uh, the fund transfer to the implementing agency, their responsibility is over. But actually, it is not until unless the fund should be utilized utilized during the financial year and and the, for the project which for which it is allotted. So that is very much important, and uh, we can't escape from uh, with simply transfer of the fund. So, so def definitely, it is my view. Yeah. See here, you know the word what they have used is CSR spending. In fact, you know as per the FAQ, it is very very clear. Implementing agency is nothing but your extended arm. He is your agent. Instead of discharging the CSR obligation or responsibility, you are engaging somebody else who will be acting on your behalf. So whatever his activities are there, it is as if you are doing on you are discharging those activities only. So if you have given the money to them, if they are spending that money, that is fine. But merely cutting a check in the name of implementing agency is not sufficient. That is not at all a CSR you have discharged your obligation towards corporate social responsibility. Number one. Number two, CSR also by 31st March, if it's the cutoff date, you have to ensure that the money has been spent by the 31st March 2023, whatever your obligation is there for 22-23 financial year. If you say that, look, I have given the money to my implementing agency and that my implementing agency is not able to spend the money, now I have to transfer that money to a specified fund, but my implementing agency is not in a position to give it to me back and all these things. This is no argument at all. It is between, it is a civil dispute between you and your implementing agency. As far as you are concerned, you are supposed to spend it by 31st March. If you are not spent it, you are supposed to transfer that money if it is not an ongoing project. As we discussed in the last webinar, within six months, you have to transfer that money to a specified fund. So, one should be very careful that when you are disbursing the funds to the implementing agency, you should be sensible enough, you should be careful enough, you have, should be diligent enough that the disbursal should be in progress of the CSR activity. CSR activity is not you are going to do it at the last quarter of the year. What the ministry is expecting out of the FAQs also, we can clearly understand that is CSR is an activity you are supposed to do that throughout the year. Of course, nowhere it is mentioned like that. It depends upon the size of your project. If the size of your project is so big, you have to start from right the month of maybe April, May, June, depending upon your this thing. But you cannot start the activity somewhere in the month of February or March and say that, look, I could not implement that because of lack of time or lack of resources and all. It will not be acceptable. So this is a very important thing one has to remember. Number two is that CSR spending should be by the companies. When you are talking about the spending, as we discussed it in the previous webinars, you have to spend cash. Kind is not permitted at all. That means you cannot do any CSR obligation. You cannot discharge in kind. You have to do it in cash only. So, Vashri, if you want to add anything further for that. Yes, yes. It's, uh, like this is uh, what you mentioned along with this, I think for this, uh, when we do the planning of the implementation of the project, we should keep a review mechanism like it should be reviewed in the half yearly so that we can see also foresee the expenditure what is going to be spent by 
end of March, and that is only should be dispersed because as it is very clearly mentioned, okay, only disbursing to the implementing agencies does, doesn't mention the uh, expenditure. So there should be a review mechanism on a quarter or a uh, uh, six months basis based on the volume of the program. Yes, thank you for giving your inputs. So uh, moving onwards, uh, uh, let's uh, let's focus on how to select the uh, right uh, implementing agency. So basically, identification of the implementing agency to undertake the CSR activities of the corporate, which is again a very important uh, decision for the corporates, uh, as it is going to take uh, take. Uh, take proper care of the funds, which is a uh, company is going to spend on the CSR activities. Also, uh, that also depends on, uh, you know, why the selection or the criteria is very much uh, uh, important because it, uh, it tells the company that how the capable implemented, uh, implementing agencies for their CSR project. So while finalizing the implementing agency, the following points should be kept in the mind. Uh, the implementing agency should have well established track record of the three years or more, which we have already seen in the under the rule four of the CSR policy. Then again, the high level committee uh, in their in their report of the 2018, they have uh, recommended that uh, for the due diligence, uh, which is to be complied with by the implementing agency. <clears throat> again, the implementing agency should not have any conflict of interest with their employees or they should not provide any benefits to their employees or their family members uh, they should not have any uh, political or any you know religious uh, connection directly or indirectly the implementing agency should have registration under section 12a section 80g of the income tax and also from 1st april 2021 onwards they should be registered with the mca by filing the form csr1 Again, the coming to the reputation point of view of the implementing agency, the one need to check the reputation of the associated person. So uh, associated person means the trustee or the founders of the NGO. Or if there is any specific uh, requirement under the any particular replicable act or by the state government, that also need to be considered. And as Subhashri ma'am has mentioned about the, that it's always better to get the a weekly review or a monthly review from the implementing agency. And also it is advisable that company should obtain the utilization certificate from the that agency uh, for the uh, to understand and track the disposal of their funds. So this was about the criteria to keep in mind for the implementing agency. Uh, here the I will I would uh, request panelists to give their inputs. Any other criteria which a company needs to keep in mind? Uh, one that is uh, totally that uh, track record, definitely one thing, but the track record should be, as we have already discussed in the previous slides, uh, track record in the similar activities. It should be in which you are supposed to do that uh, CSR, uh, the companies which is supposed to do that. So that is very important once we are finalizing the implementing agency that the track record in the similar activity, if there is not in the similar activity, because most of the uh, implementing agency have their expertise in particular field. So we should select in such a way, that is one of the thing which uh, we should look at. And the petition is very important of the implementing, implementing agency. We should find uh, before uh, selection, we should have some uh, track of that, how this uh, repetition of this implementing agency is both in terms of the regulatory as well as, as well as qualitative, as well as quantitative things can, can roughly you can say. So this is, uh, this update is from my side. Okay. Okay. Would, you, would you like to add something? Yeah, um, yeah. I, what Rakesh she mentioned, that is also, that is very important. Also, I think one more thing we also can look at the capacity, how we can assess the capacity of the organization, uh, especially uh, like for um, any research or anything when we do, we need, we generally see some CVs of uh, some 
assessment the board so there should be some such kind of capacity assessment criteria to understand the organization's capacity to take the program forward and second is governance which is very important for uh, corporates so there i feel when we implement projects so we need to uh, uh, map this gap and we need to um, build a gap in the ngos also how the corporate wants they should also keep all the records accordingly so these two things i think is very important as well yeah just to uh, add some more thing for this uh, is like uh, the CSR policy of the companies should also lay down a criteria for in case you want to select an implementing agency okay, for any particular activity. You know. Though you are discharging on your own, but suppose tomorrow for any specialized CSR activity, if you want to engage some implementing agency, what is the criteria to be? At the same point of time, if you want to collaborate also, how you will be collaborating, it is better that CSR policy lay down a criteria for that also. So if I have to select an implementing agency, how I have to do it? Basically, my agent should be discharged by uh, obligations. So and CSR, according to me, is not a commercial activity. It is a kind of uh, a service and it is a society as such. So whichever the agency it is going to be, it should not be pure, take up this activity purely as a commercial activity, but a kind of some kind of a passion is required both in the company side also as well as in the implementing agency side also they have to take up this kind of an activity with some passion no doubt about it whatever the legal requirements are there they have to be there apart from that thing apart from the experience in that particular line they need to have the maturity also you know it should not be that whatever I have been given, suppose implementing agency means what? They have some kind of a specialization. So they should always be innovative. And with the little resources, they should get maximum benefit. They should be able to give it to the society. And another important thing is also their financial strength. It should not happen that particular implementing agency is completely a hollow kind of structure because when I am suppose I have been engaging the agency, that agency is in turn might be getting the work done by somebody else. And that somebody else, for whatever the reason, they got stuck. It should not happen. This kind the implementing agency also got stuck with that thing because of the finances. So it should have some kind of a financial strength also. At the same point of time, should be able to have the ability to implement it, to monitor it, and to report it also. Sometimes there are some people. When they do the job, when the reporting comes, there will be lack of that. You know? So they should be able to report it properly from time to time. True. And the accountability and responsibility, of course, I don't need to say that particular thing. So whenever anyone is appointing, engaging and implementing agency, in the offer document itself, one should be very, very crystal clear what are the deliverables by the implementing agency and what are all the deliverables from the, the, the company side and ultimately what you require at the end of the day. Without that, there will be simply if you engage an implementing agents and expecting them that they will do miracles for you, it is not going to happen. So you cannot take it CSR as a, bird, as a burden. And that burden you want to get rid of by appointing an implementing agency, that is not at all the answer. Only implementing agency is to strengthen your arms further Wherever you are not able to do it on your own because it is not economical for you, you are engaging an implementing agency. Yeah. Uh, I just like to add, uh, rightly suggested by Swagaji, that we should have this uh, provision in the uh, policy, CSR policy, detailing about the selection of implementing agency or the process or the, uh, the, the, the way it should be. My suggestion is uh, the practically how uh, we are doing in this, uh, uh, just like to share with you that we have uh, SOP for the CSR. <clears throat> so instead of keeping everything in, um, in the policy, we have kept it in the SOP. So this is also one way can be taken care of all these things in the SOP because every time you can't go to the CSR committee for changes, et cetera. So something you can have in your hand and SOP you can change. If possibly, because like our company, we are doing through our own foundation. So we have taken the foundation also taking care of that SOP as well as the, our 
about the, uh, the CSR uh, uh, management. So SOP is a one of the option you can, uh, the companies can look at to have these provisions in the implementing agency and some other provisions they can be taking care. Yes, uh, thanks a lot for the, uh, your valuable inputs on this, uh, how to select the implementing agency. So uh, moving onwards, uh, uh, sub rule five of the rule four, which talks about the certification from the CFO. So CFO or the person who is responsible for financial management uh, shall certify about the funds so th uh, disposed have been utilized for the purposes which is approved by the board. So basically here the CFO, uh, in addition to monitor uh, monitoring by the board, CFO is required uh, to give the certification about the utilization of the CSR fund and also to look after whether it is utilized in a way which, which was approved by the board. Um, thereafter, uh, talking about the ongoing project. So here, uh, in case of ongoing project, whether it is through the uh, direct spending by the company or whether it is through the implementing agency, in both the cases, they need to uh, uh, refer the uh, in the reference of the project, they have to check the approved timelines and also year wise allocation of the fund. And also they are competent to make the modification in case of the ongoing project uh, by passing the resolution and also giving the reason uh, for that modification. Just one minute. Uh, uh, There's a certification from CACFO. Yeah. This is also a very important aspect and especially if I am going to be a CSR committee member or, or as a board member, whenever I go as a faculty for the Institute of Directors, I tell them this particular point very clearly that it is the responsibility of the CSR committee as well as of the board as far as the monitoring of CSR activities are concerned, monitoring the implementation of CSR activities. Suppose when the CFO is giving you a certificate, it should not happen that you just take it as a certificate noted and other things. No. You have to ask the CFO that what exactly he has done while giving that particular certificate, how he has ensured that the amount, whatever he has dispersed, that has been utilized for the purpose what is intended for. Has he inspected any of the projects on his own or simply based on the implementing agency's report, he is giving a back-to-back -back certificate? That is very important. Similarly, what is the periodicity of his review? See, the CSR committee may be reviewing or board may be reviewing it on a half yearly or quarterly basis. But if I am the CFO, before the next disbursement, what I am making, I should ensure that previous disbursement funds, how they have been utilized and how he is ensuring about the utilization. Is he getting a reports or what kind of reports and all? So CSR committee simply or the board simply should not take the CFO certificate just like that as a as just you know, in the minutes purpose, okay, noted and all. But at least if not at every meeting, from time to time, they need to check that particular thing, number one. Number two, it is also the responsibility of the CSR committee members as well as the board members to visit the uh, CSR project sites once in a while so that whatever you see that uh, the test of the pudding is in the eating. So similarly here also, at least once in six months, I suggest that the CSR committee members or as well as the directors are concerned, they should go and visit the CSR sites. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like as per the policy, there are uh, twice uh, for the CSR committee, there are twice meetings generally happen. So when we share all the presentation, what activities are uh, being done in the on the field, but it is also very important that committee, uh, the board, sometimes they should also go and see actually what is happening on the ground. And second, this uh, certification of, from CFO, I think this is also a very important um, uh, point in the policy that this create emphasize the accountability once again of the corporate and whatever CSR spent and as we say like the CSR obligation should is not only an obligation it is actually what we are doing what we are feeling so that is being emphasized in this rule once again just to summarize that um... Uh, companies act is uh, asking all these authorities to be in the game of the CSR. 
So CFO, board members, CSR committee members, they can't uh, uh, escape from their obligation. So uh, they should be part of this game. And, uh, and definitely as uh, suggestions coming or this is the process that they should visit twice in a year or once in a year uh, visit on the site that actually what, what is happening and what the things are going on. And CFO definitely has uh, suggested that he, he should, before approving any of the fund, he should uh, track that those the previous fund or the approved fund have been utilized or not. So this is really very good uh, provision in this, uh, uh, this under the company side. Yes, yes, definitely. And uh, in the recent amendments also, in, in case of uh, there is no proper transfer within the timeline of unspent amount, okay? And also in uh, uh, less spending of the uh, uh, their CSR funds than what they are supposed to spend. So in both the cases, the apart from company, the uh, KMPs are also uh, obliged to you know pay the high penalties. And which is like we have seen in September or October, there was one company which has to pay the penalty that was like very heavy and more than their CSR uh, unspent amount. So like almost double the CSR unspent amount, they had to pay the penalty. So definitely there, this is a very crucial on the, at the, on the part of the CFO while they are giving the certification. Yeah. So uh, let's see some of the FAQs. Uh, first question is whether CFO should certify to the board after dispersing the amount to the implementing agency also. So the answer is no. CFO is not supposed to certify uh, for the funding given to the implementing agency, but uh, definitely uh, at the time of the uh, utilization of the that fund, which is given to the implementing agency, CFO is supposed to track that fund and also to give the certification of the same in the uh, board, uh, board report. Just one minute, Dolly, say that yes. if you see the rules, nowhere they are given the CFO certificate format. They are just mentioned the CFO has to give a certificate about the uh, what's called as utilization of funds. That's it. Yes. So it is entirely up to the company. That means the CSR committee as well as the board very clearly they have to tell the CFO in the certificate what exactly they are looking at. Because if I am a CSR committee member or I am a board member of a company, what I will look is I have some obligations as a CSR committee member or as a board member. So I have to ensure that my obligations I have to discharge. I have to insulate myself also. For one of the ways of that thing, the law itself has envisaged is CFO certificate. So CFO is the person who is connected with the funds when he is the disbursing it or utilization of the funds is concerned. So I have to tell the CFO that look, in the certificate, what you are going to give me, I want this information. What the information? Suppose I have to say that if you are giving me, number one, the periodicity. CFO, if he is giving me at the fag end of the year, one certificate per a financial year, I may not accept it personally. I may say, look, I want a quarterly certificate. Okay. And in that certificate, I want to have it. What is the funds you have disbursed during the quarter? And how much is the funds utilized out of that? And what is your proposal to disburse for the next quarter? So that means what I should have an idea at any point of time. What is my total obligation out of that in the first quarter? How much you have disbursed? How much is utilized? How much you are proposing in the next quarter? Like that, it has to be. What is the past? What is the present? What is the future? And that it, it has to be given at every point of time. Similarly, I may also want an information from the CFO that based on what he is giving me this particular certificate, has he visited the site? If it is so, how many widgets he has made? It all depends upon the sensitivity about the stakes involved. And the, the kind of a, a project, suppose some projects may take longer time, but some projects are which are very, very sensitive, which need to be, you cannot have the longer period of time and all those things. So depending upon, it's all completely dynamics of the company, dynamics of the project, sensitivity of the project, the CFO certificate is to be designed by the respective companies only. So if you want to add for that, click that. 
I completely agree. Like what you you explained it very well. And at the same time, I think also we should have a regular uh, finance monitoring mechanism. Whenever we are discussing the project, we can ask the implementing agencies to give us some big uh, invoices to cross check and keep a track on of whatever about they are spending. They are maintaining all the bills and all, and they actually being spent on the real visit. Based on everything at the end of the year, when the audit is done, then the CFO certificates can be prepared based on the actual audit and the financial audit. Actually, according to me, this, this is the last week of this financial year we are in. Today is 23rd March 2023. So if I am the CFO, I have to already sensitize my implementing agencies. Was you please start reporting to me what is the amount I have disbursed and what is the amount you have spent and all those things. Because you have one more week only left to spend the money unless until it is an ongoing project. If it is a purely a CSR activities or CSR programs, which you have to complete within one financial year, you are left with only one week. If you are not able to spend the money within this particular week, that is by 31st March, you have to transfer that money within six months to the specified fund. Okay. If it is an ongoing project, if it is an ongoing project, yes, then definitely whatever the unspent money is there, you have to identify that within 30 days of that, that is by maybe 30th April, you have to transfer to a separate bank account. Okay. So it is the high time for the CSR people to take the stock of the situation. Right. And this should be a continuous process. This should not, uh, this should not practice right. at the end of the March only. This would be as a process starting from the uh, year, start of the year, beginning of the project. So much okay. this, this particular message is only for those people who have not done that. At least now you wake up. <laughs> just to add that, just to add up uh, this, uh, CFO should be part of implementing team. In terms of not the team, but the committee, because in if talk we talk about the, our company, we have our own foundation which is taking care of this. So CFO is one of the trustee of the foundation. And the foundation having the three or four meetings. So he is aware of what, what is going on in the CSR activities. Similarly, we have some internal committee also formed. There also CFO is the part of. And visit is the another thing that he has to do. So he is part of the game. He should be CFO. Then only he can, with the confidence, he can give the certificate. So make them make him confident in the whatever we are doing. He should be part of the game. We should make them the party of the, the trustee or the committee, if you have created internally, the he should be member of that or chairman whatsoever. It's the internal uh, process, but he should be taken like this. And then it will be very easy for the CFO and he will be very comfortable to give the certificate on behalf of the company. See, one more thing also that this particular week, there might be some companies who have taken up CSR activities or a program, but might be they could not have completed for various justified reasons. Can that activity can be converted into an ongoing project? Answer is yes. The rules clearly permit that any kind of activities are there, they can be converted into an ongoing project, provided proper justification is there for that, and board approval by way of a resolution is there also. In addition to that, in the board's report, very clearly, they have to justify the reasons for conversion of that CSR activities into an ongoing project. Just because you are not able to spend the money, don't try to convert that into an ongoing project. But sometimes it may so happen, you want to have some government approvals, which you could not receive it, or it might be some local uh, municipal rules and all that you could not get it because of some other uh, that force measure reasons certain constraints were there, you were not able to complete that. And because of that, you want to convert there. Some justified reasons are there. And similarly, sometimes you might have thought that this project will be completed within one year itself, but you are not able to do that because that uh, your calculations were not appropriate because of lack of experience or whatever it may be. It might be altogether a new activities. So for justified reasons, if they are there, still you have this week, during this week, you can have your CSR committee. Let that committee recommend to the board that this particular activity is to be converted into an ongoing project for these particular reasons. And if the board approves, by all means, you can do it. But don't forget that 
please remember that only for the sake of not spending the money, never ever try to do this particular activity because you have to justify that in the board's report also, which is a legal document. Rakeshji yes. and Subhashri, if you want to add anything as far as this conversion of this uh, ongoing project, which is permitted under law. No, it's correct. So now we can move to the next from my side. Yeah. Okay, thanks. So, uh, second question is whether all the three types of uh, entity company established under under Section Eight of the uh, Act, or a registered public trust, or a registered society, are required to have income tax registration under Section Twelve A as well as Section Eighty G of the Income Tax Act, nineteen sixty one. So, the answer is yes, as per uh, as we have seen in under the Rule Four, Sub Rule One. All the three type of entities are required to have uh, income tax uh, registration of under Section 12A and as well as Section 80G of the Income Tax Act to act as an implementing agency, except for any entities which is established by the uh, central government or state government, uh, they are not required to get the registration under the IT Act. A third question is whether registration of implementing agency by filling e-form CSR 1 is mandatory in case of the company which is uh, carries out the CSR activities uh, directly. So the uh, answer is no. The question of filing e-form CSR 1 uh, does not arise in case of the company which is spending the CSR uh, directly. So CSR 1 basically is required to be filed by the implementing agency when a company is selecting the uh, you know mode of uh, CSR spending through implementing agency in that case only CSR 1 is required. Only what is the reason for that implementing agency need not file CSR 1 if it is directly doing it? Sorry the corporate is yes yeah you are you are asking corporate if it, they are doing it directly right yes then oh, yes, CSR no 1 is not required of the CSR why yeah yeah, so the reason is uh, yeah, uh, government basically wanted to keep a track on the funding. Yeah, so that's Absolutely. why they came, yeah, they came up with the CSR 1 because earlier it was happening then corporate is uh, giving the money to the NGO. But then they are like, uh, you know, our task is done. We have spent 2% of our profit on the CSR uh, spending, but they, are, they were not keeping a track of their fund and they were not uh, looking at the impact of their CSR spending. Not only that, the purpose of CSR 1 is that government also want to track the implementing agencies. Yes. yes. How they are spending the money, what they are doing at all. At the same point of time, they want to cross-check with the companies, you know, how they are doing it also. Mm -hmm. That is the reason when the company itself is doing it, that anyway, it is already there. And the details and other things are there with the ministry. So you don't need a CSR 1 form for that. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. 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 So uh, now it's the uh, time of uh, Q&A. So Ashwini ma'am, we can take up the questions now. Yeah, most of the questions in the chat box have been answered during the session. So I okay. request okay. participants, if they have anything, they can unmute themselves and ask. But most of the questions have been answered. Okay, okay, great. So any questions from the participants? If you have, you can unmute and uh, tell us your question. Hello. Hello. Uh, Ma'am, I wanted to ask if the company has a yeah. trust and the directors are also trustee in it. So any contribution made through them will be also covered under related party transactions. I'll come back again, Punita. I couldn't understand your question. Uh -huh. See, I, I wanted to ask. The company has a trust. They want to uh, do CSR through uh, this trust. But the uh, uh, trustees um, are also directors in the company. So in such case, uh, the CSR contribution that we make through them uh, will be covered under related party transactions also. See, trustees per se, they are not related parties. Okay, but mm -hmm. suppose if a company, no doubt about it, the directors are related parties. If the director is a trustee by any chance, that means definitely mm -hmm. he is a related party, he is a trustee. Because yeah. 
that relationship of a related party is not because he is a trustee, because he is a director. So here what yeah. happened is the related party is a trustee. So because mm -hmm. of that, that whatever the activities he is undertaking, maybe mm -hmm. they will come because the trust is not a related party. Mm -hmm. So you are not dealing with that uh, trustee one-to-one -one basis. The company is dealing with the trust, not yeah. with the trustee, not with the trustee. Yeah. That's why it is not a related party transaction. But mm -hmm. you cannot per se, by it is not mm -hmm. a related party transaction, you have to examine transaction to transaction, whether mm -hmm. it is falling or not falling in law. So okay. to a large extent, but one thing I can say definitely is trust is not a related party. Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. okay. Similarly, okay. just to add that if KMP is also a trustee, mm -hmm. then also it will be related party transition. Mm -hmm. Similarly, yeah. like director. But my suggestion is that uh, uh, there should be some difference between the trustees and the board of trust, board of directors. It should not happen. Mm -hmm. All the trustees are the board members only, and it's a second subset of board of directors. Correct. So there should yeah, be some yeah, difference. Yeah. There should be some uh, some uh, outsiders also. Definitely, majorly should be the outsider. Oh, so okay. not from the board side. So that should be taken mm care. -hmm. To maintain, okay. uh, Sudhakar ji, to maintain the local administration excellent relationship. Many times the local administrations with the reference of certain government, state governments. Uh, programs approaching and requesting to under the uh, like for hospitals for for ac or some other uh, facilities and the companies they purchase and they provide and they also support for maintenance and all those things may not require any um, will qualify the uh, csr programs this suresh uh, you cannot just generalize the things yes because if somebody is asking me uh, in fact, I have seen one question in the chat box and okay, by that one student school fee is to be paid. I paid it. Is it a part of CSR? Answer is no. CSR is not a one-off transaction. You are doing it and you want to cover it under CSR. No, you cannot do that. CSR is a, is a uh, what's called a structured activity. What is we always say in the very first webinar, if you remember, I have mentioned that charity is not CSR activity. Similarly, philanthropy is not a CSR activity because charity and philanthropic activities are one-off transactions. It all depends upon my whims and fancies. That it is not structured properly. Whereas CSR activities are structured activities. So by buying one ambulance here, by one buying you know, one Jeep there, suppose I have given a Jeep to the police because the police were not having a Jeep. Is it a part of CSR? How can it be a CSR? Because you have to see that Schedule 7, whether the security and welfare of the society May come under that, definitely no doubt about it. But buying one Jeep here, one ambulance there and all, is it this thing? Maybe you have to, you cannot say yes or you cannot say no also. It all depends upon how you are structuring your CSR program or CSR activities. Depending upon the size of your company, say for example, you have to spend a few lakhs only, then definitely you can say that I can spend the money for so the educational, I can spend the money for health, I can spend the money for the so the welfare activities of the society. So there you may be able to cover this kind of things definitely. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I'd also I'd like to add to this question of the college student. So yes, absolutely like uh, Sudhaga sir mentioned, okay, this is not a one-off activity. But in case you have a program for education where you support sponsorship of higher education, if it falls under that program, then it can be considered. Because this is absolutely not a one-off activities. I think there may be no more questions. And before we are winding up, one thing sir, I, would I have to... a question. Uh, yeah, sorry, yeah, sir, yeah. I, I have a question. So, uh, yes, in one of the slides, you mentioned that uh, we have to start doing the CSR activities and spend and by engaging with implementation aid, implementing agency at the beginning of the year. Now, in case uh, the financials are not finalized generally by till September and it's not approved, we are not able to finalize the exact amount which we need to spend for a particular year. In that scenario, how do we start engaging with the implementing agency and making the contributions to them or transferring the CSR uh, funds to, to, to them for, for them to actually utilize that in the entire year? 
first i request my guest panelists to uh, i mean they may uh, express their opinion after that i will add if anything to be added so much you may take up yeah so uh, uh, ms mani i think for that we need to see the trade analysis every is a board presentation happen so every quarter there is a trend how much you are going to uh, have a profit or something so based on that you can create your trend generally annual report will be finalized may june it takes some time so if we wait till june and then start our program it would be really difficult so that is why you need to see our trend of my first three quarters or my fourth quarters of what is the trend based on that you can create an um, estimation budget and estimated budget and with that you can um, start your program it can be finalized in june but it generally it happens there would be some 10% to 20% ups and there but you at least you can get some idea so that you can start up your work yeah i agree with subhashri mani what subhashri has mentioned is correctly so also if your company is a listed company anyway you are having your quarterly results based on that you can definitely will come to know whether you have to spend for csr or not apart from that thing it all depends upon the size of your company if your company is a small in size and the amount which you have to spend is also not very big amount as such if you lacks only you have to do that that if you are confident enough that you will be able to do it in the next 6 months fine enough but according to me any thing you know it is always better to do it throughout the year i have no where it is written that you have to do it right from the month of april onwards but it is advisable to do that as you know that suppose when we have to do the savings and all or even for the purpose of your income tax whatever the uh, i mean wherever the money you have to invest in the provident fund amount you can invest in the month of march also or every month you can spend some money it all depends upon you same is the case with csr also in fact the ministry is expecting that in especially in case of bigger csr projects they have expressed in one of the meetings that the joint secretary has clearly said they expect that csr spend should be there right from the april onwards in the financial year or at the most from the month of may but you cannot start it in the month of january february or march of the last quarter okay so it all depends upon the size of your company and size of your csr budget okay thank you so very much sir uh, hello hello yes, yes. Uh, hi i am vaishnavi i have a question uh, am i audible yes vaishnavi you are yeah, audible yeah uh, Uh, hello sir i just wanted to ask like uh, you just said earlier that paying college fees of a student could not be considered under csr but what if the company re uh, receive a request letter from the college for payment of four to five students under this scholarship scheme so can the company consider it under csr activity so sir would you like to take that yes as i mentioned uh, vaishnavi if it is a program that uh, our company has the education or a sponsorship program yeah. so under that program it, it it comes definitely it can be taken but as a only single request if i uh, receive from one college or something then it is not possible because that would be a one time activities and if you read the um, the schedule 7 and uh, it is very clearly mentioned that one time of activities are not allowed so it is all depends on the structure of the program that you have okay okay Okay, ma'am. Not only that. Sir, not only that. In fact, one more thing also. Say, for example, in your CSR policy, you have devised that you are going to spend CSR money yeah. only for the purpose of health. Okay. If it is so, you cannot spend that for the month for the purpose of educational activities unless until you change your CSR policy. So before taking up any new CSR activity, you have to refer to your policy. that's why in the policy you have to cover as many activities as you are envisaging to take up that doesn't mean entire schedule you you can't write it as per schedule 7 you okay. have to say that three four specific activities you have to write clearly yes. and then yes. you have to do it second thing is as i was mentioning and subhashri also rightly mentioned that for payment of fees for four five students or 10 students or 15 students is not the question okay what is the question is that you do you have a structured stipend program say for example you will give to the poor students who are below the poverty line what is the poverty line you have to define that the school fee will be paid by the company the for the for the part the by the company under the csr activities yes it yes. is permitted no doubt about it or you announce a scholarship scheme 
Okay. And that particular scholarship scheme should not be confined to one college when you have 20 colleges in the city. Right. Maybe sir. that one college, if it is so also, by that college should not be the prestigious college in the city and you are yes. ignoring all the other colleges. Yes. That means what? You are going for the prestigious college because you want to have a mileage out of the CSR activity, which is not permitted again. Right. Sir. So you have to ensure all this. Similarly, whenever you are announcing these kind of scholarships, please ensure that don't get any mileage out of that. Okay, okay. For yes. your company, no, no yes. question of advertisements, branding, and all those things are not to be done. Please be okay. clear about that. Okay, sir. Okay, thank you because so much, sir. Because recently somebody asked me that they want to sponsor a gold medal to the students or silver medals and bronze medals, and they want to put the company's logo on the medal. The moment yeah. you put that bus, it is not a part of CSR. Right, sir. Okay. <laughs> Okay, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, any more question from the participants? Uh, let's just I, wait for a yeah. This is Melin Nigam. I just have a small query. Is there any database available for this implementing agency? you can uh, go through the google you can check like uh, darpan is there uh, give india is there you can check state wise uh, implementing partner there samhita is also there there are a lot of agencies like uh, are available you can just check in the google no but i did that uh, i did that uh, there is a portal of mca also that csr mca yeah. there are agencies names are there but you know some of the agencies okay. most of the agencies are um, not working they are not functioning they are closed down so i thought there may be some the maybe the institute or maybe some people may be having this database Milind, uh, right now we don't have, uh, I also don't have, uh, have not seen any such kind of repository as such which is created from where you get uh, such kind of information. But uh, of course, uh, Swashri has suggested you can Google it and all depends on the project, which type the project you are supposed to take up and uh, that implement, implementing agency have that expertise in that uh, such project or not. So that we will have to have, um, take it. But in future, as you are saying, it may come also. Very positive. Only, if you remember, you were mentioning last time one panelist who has come to our webinar, who is an NGO. Yeah. So yeah, you so may, you a... may, that Milind, you may contact Dolly and she may be able to help you out with the number of that particular gentleman who is running yes. an NGO and who is also acting as an implementing agent. Yes, yes. And also, sure, sure. Uh, alternatively, you can check on the website of NGO Darpan. So, uh, on NGO that Darpan. also. The yeah. statewide details are also mentioned there. But yes, yes, maybe some of them are not working that you need to yeah. see. Yeah. Yes, yes. That yeah. the independent verification will be required, even if it is mentioned in the, you know, on the website. Yeah, yeah. Anyways, that's the, that's being a corporate, we have to do that due diligence. Otherwise, we will be in yes. trouble. Yes, yes, definitely. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. Thanks yeah. a lot. Yeah. So I think we can uh, so, uh, wrap up the... Only, only, only one thing before concluding, Dolly, I would like to tell the participants is that yeah. don't take the CSR activity very lightly because the regulator is expecting the corporates to do the CSR spending. They are keeping a track of everything. Okay, they are keeping a track of the corporates who are spending, who are not spending, who are spending earlier, who are not spending now. The full data is there and CSR 2, that is the annual return is nothing but a complete CT scan of the corporate. So, and definitely that wherever you are lacking, the penal projects will be very stringent. The regulatory activism is very much there. Wherever in doubt, please consult somebody and then get it implemented. Don't, uh, I mean, okay, relax, because as I was re-emphasizing that, this is the last week. Take the stock of the situation, wherever corrective measures are required, still you have an opportunity to do that. With this... Uh, Hello. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thanks for uh, giving this opportunity. Thank you. It's really very interesting session. Thank, Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your time and for your input.